Thank you very much. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here. You know, it was 43 years ago in Mexico City that I was in my first Olympic Games. I won two gold, a silver, and a bronze, and I was considered a loser. That was the driving force that made me really focus on the next four years winning seven gold medals in 1972 Olympic Games. I get asked all the time, what was the reason that I won? I guess I was a little bit lucky. I worked hard, and my last name started with an S. It was in 1960. I was in a YMCA camp program that my mother put me into, and I found out that the coach asked everybody to hold on to the side of the pool, and he called everybody's name out one at a time, and the instructions were, swim across the pool. That was it. Little did I know that he was watching to see who didn't stop, and there was about four swimmers that didn't stop, and I was asked to go out on the swim team. If I had stopped in the middle of the way, I wouldn't be here. The things that made me great, I would like to share with you, and I have such a limited time. It was the mystery, the magic, the wonder, and the innocence of never having done it before. And those were the seeds of creativity that developed into my individual success story. Each and every one of you have a dream. You need to have a dream. You need to focus on that dream. The dream that was created from the Olympic Games was done almost 100 and whatever, 12 years ago by a guy by the name of Baron Pierre de Coubertin. I would like to share that with you, and I don't have it memorized, so I work off of a note. So let me just uh, take this moment. He said, the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. Baron Pierre de Coubertin, 1896. The Olympic Games back then was a very aristocratic type of an event. And if you dissect the fact that if you look exactly at those words, I don't believe in any of those words. Listen to them. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. Excuse me. I worked out for hours and years, 26,000 miles. What do you mean it's not, it's not worthy of the triumph? that I wanted to put up with that struggle. The essential thing in life is not to have conquered, but to fought well. Excuse me. The whole idea was, I didn't wake up, and neither did you, with an ambition to lose my job, to be first to finish second place. So I had great coaching along the way. As a matter of fact, I went to a coach that was the best coach in the world. I swam next to the best swimmer in the world named Don Scholander. And I immediately saw an opportunity. My whole world was before me. The one that said, this is exactly who I want to be. I want to be like him. I want to beat him. As a matter of fact, I came up with a poem early on in my life as an assignment in school about a dream. I would like to share that with you. My mother actually gave this to me as a present about five years ago, and I'm glad that she did. This is what I wrote at the age of 13. Giving all you have to give to see it in your mind, never turn away or quit. If you seek, you know you'll find. It's the power of that dream holding on to hope that will take you much higher. Power to believe that you can aspire. That's all born in your power of a dream. Giving all you have to give to set your visions high. The empires of your future hope are in the empires of your mind. It's the power of that dream holding on to hope that will take you much higher. Power to believe that you can aspire to achieve all that's born in your personal dream. You know, I had a dream, the mystery, the magic, the wonder, and the innocence. It was a magical idea of being, Olympia game, of being an Olympian. I had no idea how to get there. It was the wonder of the journey that was going to take me there. But the innocence of never having done it were the reasons that I was so successful. Because if somebody told me that I had to work out for 12 years and 26,000 miles and get up early in the morning and do this and do that, I think I would have shied away. It would have been just too much. I really believe, I really believe that our destiny is not a matter of chance, but about the choices that we make in life. It's not something that you can wait for, it's something that you actively have to go out and try to achieve. And you do that through hard work. In my sport of swimming, hard work doesn't translate into fast times. Swimming fast, by working out hard, I might have an opportunity to actually swim fast times. And that's what I did. You know, I was asked once in Sydney, Australia, what my greatest accomplishment was at the Olympic Games in 2000, and I said, well, probably winning seven gold medals and setting seven world records at the Olympic Games. And somebody said, no, I don't think that was your greatest accomplishment. Let's examine your journey. And what it was pointed out to me was is that 
he told me that every time you swam in a race to try to break a world record, in the finals only, not the prelims or anything like that, you swam about 72 times. You had 35 world records. That meant that mostly about 50% of the time that you swam in a finals, you were most likely to break a world record. But more importantly, the last two years of your career, you swam 20 times and you broke 19 world records. That's your greatest accomplishment. I wasn't aware of that, to be honest with you, because I was so focused on one day at a time. And I want to say that the only reason I was successful was because I made it a point to be number one because I couldn't stand to lose. And it was because I was engaged. I was actively engaged in the idea that it was worth the risk. I knew I was going to fall down, but it was how well I stood up what counted. How well I was able to take the criticism and the negative things that happened to me. I would like to say that really, if you really think about all that's possible, it's never too late to be what you might have been. George Eliot said that. He was in Parliament in the 1800s in England, and it's so true. It's never too late to be who you might have been. You get there by the great things that you do, but not all at once. They're the sum of all the parts that we try to add up. And it's important to understand that not always you will have a success. You know, I ask a simple question, and I want to share this with you, and I know my time is limited. I want to say that if you take one dollar, and you're given one dollar a day, and each day you're given this dollar, all you're required to do is stack that one dollar on top of another. At the end of 100 days, you should have $100. If you believe that that's a true, true evaluation that if somebody gave you a dollar a day for 100 straight days and you think you have $100 at the end of that day, at the end of that time, raise your hand if you think the answer is yes in the audience. Raise your hand if you think the answer is yes, that you would have $100. Okay, so then if you think that you do not have $100, raise your hand and the answer is no. Now see, here's an interesting examination. About 10% of you said yes then logic says that in the next question that I asked, the other 90% of you should have raised your hand. And this is, I've been doing this for 35 years. 80% of you did not participate. And I know you know the answer. So the reality is, is that you have to ask yourself, this is the reason that I'm not successful. I'm too afraid to lose. But don't be afraid to lose. It's not important to know the right answer. It's important that you had a chance to give an answer. And that's how you become successful. So look at, you know, I can talk to you about a lot of different opportunities that individually when I've gone away in workshops about what would be successful, and I can't tell you what would be successful for you. You need to find that journey. I once was told that if you don't know where you're going, you won't know when you've arrived. Doesn't that sound correct? If you don't know where you're going, you won't know when you've arrived. If you think that statement's true, raise your hand. Very good, audience. Now I got about 50 or 60 percent participating. That's the whole idea. Let me give you a counter argument to that. I think it's impossible for that statement to be true. If you don't know where you're going, you won't know when you've arrived. You know why? Because if you don't know where you're going, it's because you never gave yourself some place to be at. So if you were at some place of being, you couldn't recognize that you were at that place, so therefore you couldn't deduce and even come to the conclusion you haven't arrived anywhere. Think about it. Both of those arguments are true on face value individually. But the way I said it the last time contradicts the first statement. The point I'm trying to make is, is that along the life of your journey, it's so important to make a decision. Stand by that conviction. I made a decision to swim in seven events, not because somebody told me to do so. It's because over the course of the time that I competed for so many years, I was told, look, if you hold the world record, you might as well swim it. You'll be called a chicken if you don't go ahead and do that. It was really difficult, but I took one day at a time. It didn't bother me to think about something else that was happening on a different time of day or a different thing that would be an interference to being focused. I'll give you an example. When I was in math class as a youngster, I had a girlfriend in that class, and I used to pass her notes 50% of the time. So I obviously missed 50% of what the professor had to say, but that didn't bother me. I was more interested in trying to impress my girlfriend. But what do you think happened when I was with my girlfriend for one hour? You think I wasted one second thinking about math? No, I devoted 100% of my time convincing her I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. 
I paid attention to what my coaches had to say. I listened to what they had to say. I struggled with what they had to say. It wasn't easy. But I knew that the journey was one step at a time. And it was one step at a time so that it was something that I could personally achieve. Nobody else. And sure, I fell down a lot. I may have broken 35 world records. I may have done really great based on a statistic that I just rattled off to you about my career. But I have a box of a bunch of silver medals and blue ribbons and purple ribbons, and I'm going to leave you with a really interesting concept of what happened to me as a nine-year-old. My mother heard me, my name being called out after I swam an event. It was, I think, a 50 freestyle. And there were these three circles on the ground. One said six, five, four, and then there was a staircase, three, two, one. And I was called to stand on number five. I had no concept of why I was there. Obviously, it was a timed event, and I got fifth place. They handed me a purple ribbon. And I looked over there at the guy standing up on this stand, and he had a blue ribbon. I took that purple ribbon back to my mom. I threw it in her lap, and I started to cry. Tell me what the color is that you will never see me ever wear. It's purple. I identified with the idea that as a cause and effect of being successful, you were rewarded. And we, we are a society that bases our challenges on rewards. So I go back to Bar Baron Pierre de Coubertin. He said, well, guess what? It didn't happen, did it? You need to go through the struggle with the idea that you're going to win. So let me conclu conclude this evening with this thought. We, each and every one of us, are gathered here tonight in celebration and tribute richly earned by all of your success stories. That's why you're here. A willingness to learn from all of us that are sharing our ideas with you. Let us go together in spirit, compassion, tolerance, achievement, and excellence, not only through the remainder of this year, but into next year and the following years. It is a race against time that we cannot afford to lose. Let the challenge begin. Let the time for you to succeed begin. Let your dreams and the empires of your imaginations take you much higher, but not without pain, not without sorrow, not without dedication, not without commitment, and not without sorrow. I never had this and I never had that. I never was an Olympian, but I thought it and I dreamed it, and that's why I'm standing here tonight. Thank you very much.